let me say welcome. Uh, and uh, my name is Dan. Uh, my name is Dan Trejo. I'm the uh, district manager for California Water Service Rancho Dominguez District. Uh, this district is uh, comprised of uh, four separate operating systems, uh, which includes the Palos Verdes Peninsula. That's our PV system. So um, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Justin Scarf. Justin Scarf is here as well as uh, Julian Gandara from the race department. But I'm going to turn it over to Justin, and uh, he'll let you know what the presentation is going to be. Thank you. What a great turnout. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I appreciate it. Just a quick question. Everybody know we, they're, we're in a drought? Anybody not know? As, as Dan said, uh, my name is Justin Scarb. I'm the Government and Community Relations Manager with Cal Water. In short, that means I talk to people. Uh, I had one of these events last night in Northern California, so I'm a little worn out. I had to fly back today. Uh, before I get started and get into the presentation, I was hoping that I could make an agreement with you all. Uh, we've got a lot of people here tonight, and I'm sure that lots of people are going to have questions during the course of the presentation. We're going to have a microphone set up so everybody can ask the questions that they have to ask. My commitment to you is I won't leave here tonight until nobody has any other questions that they want to ask. I only ask of you that you wait until the end of the presentation to ask those questions. Is that fair enough? Thank you. I appreciate it. So we're going to talk about a couple things today. The first is the recent developments in relation to the drought. The second is what Cal Water is doing in relation to the drought. The third is some of our conservation tools that we have available to all of our customers, including those up on the peninsula. And then finally, we want to save the most time for questions and answers. So as you probably read in the newspaper or saw on the internet or saw on the news, on April 1st, Governor Brown issued an executive order. It was not an April Fool's joke. Uh, it did a couple things. The first thing it did is it declared that there is a continuing state of emergency in California because of the drought. The second thing that it did is it mandated that the State Water Resource Control Board adopt regulations to achieve a statewide 25% reduction in potable urban water use. That 20, uh, the governor's executive order stated that that 25% reduction had to be achieved as compared to 2013, and that reduction had to be achieved by February 2016. On April 7th, the State Water Resource Control Board issued a regulatory framework to comply with the governor's executive order. The regulatory framework that the state board released assigned each community a reduction target to meet that 25% that 25 aggregate reduction in potable urban water use or drinking water compared to 2013. The way that they broke each community up into the different reduction targets was based on that, that community's usage of water in September 2014. The regulatory framework also adopted additional or proposed uh, additional prohibitions on water use. On April 9th, the California Public Utilities Commission, that's the agency that regulates Cal Water and other water utilities across the state, mandated two things. One, that we comply with the regulations that were forthcoming from the State Water Resource Control Board. Then also mandated that we file Schedule 14.1, our water shortage contingency plan, which I'll get into more detail below. On May 5th, the State Water Resource Control Board adopted their final regulations in response to the governor's executive order. It adopted several things. One, a statewide prohibition on certain forms of water use, which I'll get into more detail in a minute. And then again, a mandatory reduction in potable water use for each community in the state based on their usage from the average of their usage in June 2014 to September 2014 as compared to 2013. What that ended up looking like is a system of tiers based on each community's water use. So at tier one, you've got to uh, get approval from the State Water Resource Control Board to fall into that tier. 
but based on each community's water use, you had as each community increased in their water use or they showed that they had additional more water use, they had a higher conservation target that they had to achieve. At the low end, you've got 8% all, all up to the high end of a 36% reduction in, urban wa of, in water use in 2015 versus the same time period in 2013. So what that means for customers on the peninsula, that time period that they were looking at, June 2014 to September 2014, the average water use on the peninsula for our customers was 255 gallons per person per day. That puts the, all the customers on the peninsula into that highest tier, requiring a 36% reduction or tier nine in their water use in 2015 versus 2013. If there's a silver lining in all this, you all are in pretty good company. <laughs> Newport Beach, they have a 28% reduction that they have to achieve. Brentwood, a 32% reduction. Woodside, which is up in Northern California, 36. Cowan Heights, 36. Beverly Hills, 36. Monterey Park, 36. Yorba Linda, 36. So it's not just the peninsula. Uh, the governor and the State Water Resource Control Board didn't single you out. Uh, you're definitely in good company. There's a number of other water utilities uh, or service areas across the state that also have to achieve that 36% reduction. But I figured that I'd show some of the communities that I, I felt were uh, similar socioeconomically to the peninsula. So that brings us to, we've got a 36% reduction that our customers in Palos Verdes on the peninsula are going to have to achieve in 20, 2015 versus 2013. It makes sense to look at what was achieved in 2014. Unfortunately, we only had a very small reduction in water use in 2014 versus 2013. That's the thick blue uh, bar on the bottom. It was a 4% reduction. So to get to where we need to get to by the end of 2015, it's an additional 32% reduction that we're going to have to get this year uh, for the rest of the year through February 2016 uh, to get to where the governor has told us that we need to be at. So what brought you all out here today is our plan, or Cal Water's plan, to not only meet what the State Water Resource Control Board has told us that we have to do, and the mandates that they've put on us, and by proxy, the mandates that they put on each one of our customers, and the mandates that the governor has put on us, and by proxy, the mandates that the governor has put on each one of our customers. What we filed with the on April 28th, what we filed with the commission is, as I said before, Schedule 14.1. This is our water shortage contingency plan. It's a plan that we put together in times of drought or other water shortage. It's not only drought, but most of the time it's going to be related to a drought that we enact this or that we propose it to the commission. We're expecting the final approval from the commission to be handed down on May 28th with an effective date of June 1st, which is quickly approaching. And honestly, I think everybody at Cal Water wishes that we had more time uh, to, in order to comply with this. Unfortunately, uh, these are the mandates that are being handed down to us by the State Water Resource Control Board. The compliance is going to begin on June 1st. This is not Cal Water saying, hey, we want all of our customers to start complying with this in a, you know, a few week time frame. Uh, this is really coming from the State Water Resource Control Board. Our water shortage contingency plan does two primary things. The first thing that it does is it readopts, for all intents and purposes, the mandatory restrictions on water use that have been adopted by the State Water Resource Control Board. And I want to go through some of those prohibited uses of water. <clears throat> the first, application of water to a landscape area or an outdoor area that causes runoff. So if you've got a lot of water that's running into the street, and going down, going down the gutter, that's a no-no. Shouldn't be doing that, based on the restrictions that have been put forward by the State Water Resource Control Board. The second, using a hose to wash your car if it doesn't have a shutoff nozzle. What a shutoff nozzle is, is if you drop the hose on the ground, it's gonna stop spitting out water. If you don't have a shutoff nozzle on your hose, it means it's just gonna keep running. So if you're washing your cars at home, you need to make sure you've got a shutoff nozzle on your cars, I'll talk about that, uh, not on your cars, on your hoses that you're using to watch your cars. Uh, 
I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but you can get those, hose no those nozzles from Cal Water. Is anybody growing mold on their sidewalks? No? Okay. Uh, if you're applying water directly to your driveway or sidewalk, the board has said, don't do that anymore. The use of a water fountain or other decorative water feature with potable water, unless there's a recirculating system connected to it. What a recirculating system is, is that it, instead of filling the, the fountain up every few days with additional water, it just recirculates the water that's already in there. You need one of those uh, in order to keep using that fountain. This one is a no-brainer, I think, but the application of water to, or irrigating outside within 48 hours of measurable rainfall. So if it's raining outside, we ask, and the board asks, that you not, uh, not irrigate your lawn, not, and that prohibition extends up to 48 hours after measurable rainfall. If anybody's building a new house or building a new business, if there's any new construction that's occurring, the state's mandating that that construction occur only with micro spray or drip irrigation systems. Uh, those are high efficiency systems that uh, apply a very small amount of water over a longer period of time at a very low pressure uh, to the area that's being irrigated. One thing that we're going to be doing to try to, try to comply with the restrictions that have been set forth by the board and achieve the reduction requirements that we have to achieve is implementing a system of restrictions on outdoor irrigation. Limiting the irrigation to three days per week between the hours of 8 a.m. and not, no, I'm sorry, no watering between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. The rationale for that is that it's the hottest period of the day. If you irrigate overnight, it's more likely that you're going to get a higher percentage of your water into the ground and what you're trying to irrigate as opposed to it evaporating and burning off into the atmosphere. There are exemptions built into the restrictions for drip irrigation systems and micro spray irrigation systems. And if you're hand watering, if you're watering a vegetable garden with a bucket uh, or, or other device that you hold in your hand, that's also exempt and that's perfectly acceptable. The reason I haven't told you what the days per week are yet is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to coordinate with all the different cities that we serve. We serve four on the peninsula. We also serve Carson, Torrance, uh, a portion of Lomita, some other areas. We really want to are trying to get on the same page with everybody in all of our service areas to make sure that there's a consistent message and that everybody's irrigating on the same days so that when you go and talk to your friends Maybe you have friends in Redondo Beach. I live in Redondo Beach, so I'm going to consider you all my friends now. Uh, I hope that's okay. We'll see how the rest of the presentation goes. Uh, so they don't tell you, oh, I can water on these days. And you're like, well, why, do I have, why am I watering on these days? We want a consistent message. So what we're, going, we're efforting that as we speak uh, to try to get those, con that consistency. And we're going to make sure that all of our customers know what those restrictions are by June 1st. That'll be a direct mail piece that we send to our customers, similar to the invitation that you receive for this event tonight. The other restriction, <clears throat> or another restriction, is that we're asking that our customers fix leaks in their system, their internal plumbing, or their irrigation system that are in their control. We ask that you get those fixed in five days. I think that that's, uh, that's a no-brainer. We're going to be making an effort when we see uh, something in, in, you know, in our records that show that a customer might have a leak to make sure that we're informing our customers that they might have a leak uh, in their system uh, so, that they can, uh, the, so they can meet that. Businesses are not exempt from the restrictions that have been handed down by the board. You've probably seen this. Maybe even some of the restaurants that you've eaten at, that you eat at, already have signs on the tables that indicate they won't serve you water unless you ask specifically for the water. The reason why they're doing that is that's a restriction from the board. You don't serve water to patrons unless they specifically ask for it. Another restriction on businesses, hotels and motels across the state are now required to provide their guests with the option of not having their linens laundered daily. So some of the hotels that you go to, you might already see those signs in the bathroom or on the bed that say, 
If you don't want your towels laundered today, leave it over the shower curtain or leave it on the rack. If you want it laundered, then put it on the floor. You're going to be seeing a lot more of those up and down the state in California. That's a restriction that's been handed down by the board. And then finally, uh, cities aren't left out of the equation either. Uh, the governor's executive order and the restrictions from the State Water Resource Control Board have told cities that they cannot use potable water, drinking water, to irrigate public street medians that have ornamental turf on them. Two restrictions that we're, that we're looking at that are not in uh, the restrictions that have been set forth by the board. Uh, they are, relate to the filling and refilling of swimming pools and relate to the filling and refilling of ornamental ponds, if somebody has a fish pond in their backyard. I say that we're looking at those. Uh, our initial thought was that it's a, bad, uh, it's a bad optic. It looks bad if you've got a bunch of people that are building new pools in their backyard. The pool industry has let us know and the rest of the water utilities across the state know that there's at least some data that shows that pools are actually more water efficient than not having a pool. Uh, so we're still working on these two restrictions. <laughs> I don't even know what I said that was funny. <laughs> what did I say that was so funny? So I, I'll, 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 I'm glad that that was the reaction to the pool industry. I, I feel somewhat confident about that. I wasn't even trying to get uh, a joke there. But so the, the argument that the pool industry makes is they say, if you didn't have a pool, you'd probably have grass there instead. And you're going to be, use, you're going to be irrigating that grass as opposed to filling the pool one time. So that's not the argument that, that, we're, that we're making, but we want to investigate that further before we finalize the res those restrictions. Unfortunately, uh, and this is kind of the, the downside of restricted uses, as you've probably heard in the news, the governor has proposed massive fines for people who violate restrictions. The State Water Resource Control Board has proposed uh, relatively large fines of up to $500 a day for people that violate the restrictions. In our Schedule 14.1, we wanted to combine uh, a level of penalty or monetary penalty that goes along with violating those, those uh, prohibited uses of water, but we also wanted to create incentives for our customers to adopt more uh, efficient uses of water. So the first violation, let's say that you've decided that you want to grow mold on your sidewalk or on your driveway, and one of our meter readers sees you doing that, uh, they're probably just going to talk to you the first time and say, hey, you really shouldn't be trying to grow mold on your sidewalk. It's not the best use of water right now. We're in a drought. After that, probably what would happen is that you would get a notice of violation from us if we see it happening again. That again will just lay out the corrective action that can be taken. The second violation would, probably, would entail a $50 fine. The incentive there, though, is that if you were to go through one of our pro conservation programs that we have, uh, either in terms of installing a high efficiency irrigation system or completing one of our home water use evaluations, CalWater can waive that fine. That it's not mandatory that we impose that fine on you. So it's a carrot and stick approach that we're trying to adopt. The third violation, that uh, surcharge would go up to $100, but again, we have the option of waiving that surcharge in certain situations. The fourth violation, and I hope that we never have to get to a fourth violation with anybody in this tent. Will anybody pledge to not get to a fourth violation? Nobody. Okay. So the penalty for getting to a fourth violation, uh, Dan, we might need to order some flow restrictors. Uh, the fourth violation is not only a written notice, but CalWater then would also be authorized to install a flow restrictor on your service line. What a flow restrictor does is it limits the amount of water that goes through the water meter uh, so that it would only really be capable of serving indoor use, that you wouldn't be able to run an irrigation system with the water that's going through the system. So I'll ask again, can I get a pledge from everybody not to get to a fourth violation? Fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate it. So. And if you're pledging not to get to a fourth violation, the, these other issues, uh, the, the subsequent stages are not as important. But someone who 
is at that fourth violation and maybe we've already installed a flow restrictor and they're still trying to irrigate seven days a week or grow mold on their sidewalk, uh, we have the option of shutting off that customer's water service until the problem is corrected. Also with egregious violations, uh, I'm trying to think of something that would constitute an egregious violation. Uh, perhaps intentionally breaking all of your sprinkler nozzles uh, on your irrigation system and having them just shoot straight up in the air. You all see that when that happens. Uh, telling us that you intentionally did that because you intentionally wanted to waste water, uh, that might fall into the category of an egregious violation. Uh, in that instance, we do have the authority to install flow restrictor. Again, that's not where we want to get to. Our approach in responding to the drought, and this came directly from our board of directors and Cal Waters president and CEO, is we want to have a customer first approach. We don't want to be out there finding people. We don't want to be penalizing people. I think at the end of the drought, if we haven't had to penalize a single one of our customers, we're going to be elated about that. Because it means that we were able to educate our customers through meetings like this. We we're able to work with each and every one of them to make sure that they have the tools and information necessary to comply with restricted use of, prohibited uses of water. So the second part of Schedule 14.1 and our uh, water shortage contingency plan relates to water budgets. The state is mandating, as I said before, that all of our customers on the PV Peninsula achieve a 36% reduction in their water use uh, in 2015 as compared to 2013. We figure that the best way to do that is to communicate exactly what those numbers are to our customers through a system of individualized water budgets. So what we're working on right now, what our IT team is doing and our customer service team is doing, is they're going through everybody's accounts, all 500,000 customers of ours across the state, and they're saying, Joe and Sally used, and if anybody is named Joe or Sally in the audience, I'm not picking on you, I promise. It was just the first two names that came to my mind. Joe and Sally used, let's say, 100 units of water in July of 2013. Their water budget to comply with the state mandate is that they can only use 64 units of water in July of 2015. It's a 36% reduction that's being imposed on you all by the state and by proxy uh, you know, through us. The, there's a surcharge. Unfortunately, I think at this point I need to get behind the podium. <laughs> there is a surcharge uh, that goes along with uh, exceeding your monthly water budget for any given month. That surcharge, and I'm a slide ahead, and I apologize for that, but I started talking about it, so I'm going to talk about it. I'll go back to the other two slides. The surcharge for exceeding a water budget will be $9.54 per unit over your water budget that you go in a given month, that surcharge is in addition to the normal rates that you pay for your water service, your monthly service charge, and your uh, any quantity rates that you pay. Our customers uh, that are enrolled in our low income rate assistance program, their surcharge for exceeding their water budget would be half that. And those surcharges will be included on a customer on the customer's monthly water bill. Uh, the way that we got to the 954 is it's actually twice, two times as high as the highest tier, tiered rate that we have for our customers in Palos Verdes. So I'm going to go back two slides to tell you how you're going to know what your water budget is for the, for the preceding months. So first, beginning June 1st, we're hoping before that, again, we're working under the gun here, so I don't want to promise that it's going to be before June 1st, but definitely by June 1st, Everybody will be able to go on to the web. <laughs> By June 1st, everybody will be, go, be able to go on to the web, put in their account number with CalWater, put in their zip code. They'll be able to see what their water usage was by month in 2013, what their water usage was by month in 2014, and what their water budget is for each month in 2015 through the end of the drought. Or not necessarily the end of the drought, but by the end of February 2016, which is when the governor and the State Water Resource Control Board has told us that we have to be in compliance. Also, on each one of your water bills, beginning on your first bill that you receive after June 1st, it will tell you what your water budget for the next month is. So you get your, let's say you get your water bill on June 30th, 
It's going to tell you what your water budget is for July. And what that number is going to be, it, again, it's going to be the amount of water that you used in your house in 2013 minus the 36% reduction that the state has told us that we have to achieve. In a little bit of good news, we're also establishing minimum water budgets for each one of our customers. The minimum water budgets represent uh, the minimum amount of water that no one will have to reduce their usage below. The way that we've calculated the minimum water budget is based on census data of the average number of people that live in a household in, Pal in Palos Verdes on the peninsula. Uh, and then multiplying that by 55 gallons per person per day, which is the amount that the state says is necessary for indoor water use. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, because I'm sure there's going to be questions about that. So here's a rough example of what, that, what these reductions would look like. On the far left, the darkest blue bar, you see a customer who used 30 units of water, or 30 CCF, one CCF equals 748 gallons. So that customer used 22,440 gallons of water, which is a lot of water, uh, in, let's say, July of 2013. In July of 2014, that customer reduced their water use to 25 CCF, and if you did that, thank you, I appreciate it. Everybody at Cal Water appreciates it. Uh, unfortunately, the board has said that we've got to do more. The governor has said that we've got to do more. So that customer's water budget for July of 2015 takes 36% off the top from the 30 that was used in 2013, and it gives you the water budget for July 2015, which works out to 19 units of water, or just over 14,000 gallons of water for that month. And then, as I said, exceeding that water budget would entail those surcharges that I talked about just a minute ago. And some other good news, and this, is a, this, a, this actually is good news. This isn't bad news. Uh, how many people have rollover minutes on their cell phone plan? Okay. We're going to allow our customers to bank water that they don't use in one month and carry that over to the next month. So let's say your water budget in July of 2015 was 20 units, and you only used 15. You would then have five units of water in your water bank that you can apply that will be applied automatically to future month usage before you get a surcharge so let's say you had five in the bank and you exceed your water use you exceed your water budget by five units in august of 2015 in that case you're not going to see a surcharge because you had that in the bank the one caveat i'm going to make to what's in the the water banking system is you can't sell them to your neighbors you can't trade them <laughs> Okay, they're for you and you alone, all right? <laughs> and uh, truth be told, this was actually an idea that was brought up to the State Water Resource Control Board of whether or not people should be able to, uh, you know, trade between different service areas, whether or not the peninsula could trade their water savings with water savings being achieved in, uh, you know, someplace else in Los Angeles. We're also going to have an appeals process. And I, I think that this is going to get into a lot of the questions that people have uh, that they're already thinking of right now. We recognize 100% that there, it was literally impossible, especially given the short time frame that we had to work under, basically two months uh, from the governor's executive order to when we have to start complying, to devise a system that was going to take into account every single one of our customers and take, care, take into account each, one, each and every one of your alls and the rest of our customers across the state, their unique circumstances. So we're going to have an appeals process. Customers who meet certain criteria that are set up in the appeals process will be able to call us. Our customer service representatives will walk you through that appeals process uh, and increase your budget accordingly as long as those criteria are met. Some of the reasons for the appeals might be that water use, a certain amount of water use is necessary for various health and safety concerns. Uh, we had a, a question about this actually before the meeting started, that my doctor has told me that I've got to do X, Y, and Z and it takes this, month wa this much water. We're going to look at what the minimum water budget is for that, for that household, also apply what's needed for those health and safety concerns, and increase the budget by that amount. 
Another reason, if there's certain economic needs, there are some businesses, I'm gonna say not as many up on the peninsula as in some of our other service areas, but there might be a business case for why somebody needs to use a certain amount of water. That isn't to say that we're giving businesses a free ride and we're telling our businesses that they don't have to achieve reductions. We're just saying we're going to look at it and we're going to see what we can do for our customers in the same way that we're going to look to see what we can do for all of our customers. Again, we want to have a customer first approach to the drought and our response to it. Also, we want to take into account those customers that have done an amazing job up to this point in reducing their water use. This is the most common question that, that we get at any of these events that I started saving water in 1980 or I, did, I tore out my lawn in 2011. We're still working on the final details of exa the exact time frame that we're going to look at and exactly how those we're going to look at those reductions. But that's another aspect of the appeals process that we're going to have. Again, that information will be out to you all by June 1st uh, when, we, when we also send out that information about uh, the day of weak water and restrictions. Talked about that. Talked about that. <laughs> Sorry, I got. So the next thing that I want to talk about is some of our conservation programs. Cal Water, starting back in 2008 or so, uh, has devised by far one of the leading water conservation programs of any utility in the state, of any water utility in the country. And if you haven't taken advantage of those programs, I urge you to take advantage of them. There's a table full of information inside about all the various conservation programs that we offer, both for our residential customers and for our business and commercial customers. Those things range from rebates on high efficient toilets, toilets that don't use as much water when you flush them. If you're looking for a new clothes washer and you find one that's a high efficiency one, uses less water, we've got a rebate for that. If you're thinking about redoing your garden or you wanna automate the process of when you can and can't water and when you should and shouldn't be watering. We've got a rebate for smart irrigation controllers. If your gardener says, hey, you've got a whole bunch of nozzles in your irrigation system that are broken, we've got rebates for high efficiency, uh, high efficiency sprinkler nozzles. We've got a water use eva uh, efficiency evaluation program where uh, a, a consultant that we work with, they will come out to your house They'll evaluate your water use inside and outside. They'll look for leaks. They'll give you suggestions on way that you can improve your water use, et cetera. Uh, we're hoping that every one of our customers can take, uh, take advantage of that program. And I can say that because our conservation manager isn't here today. So <laughs> I'm just gonna give him a little bit more work. Available June 1st, we're gonna have a turf replacement program. It's a rebate program. Uh, we're still finalizing the details of what that program is going to look like, but you'll get a rebate based on the square footage of turf that gets replaced with drought tolerant landscaping. Uh, actually, when you walked in uh, into the building, we just recently did the, redid the landscaping here. It can give you a little bit of an idea of what you can make your, uh, your you know, front yard or backyard or both look like if you install some drought tolerant landscaping. So I mentioned before that we're, we have a rebate program for high efficiency toilets. We're also going to be launching a high efficiency toilet delivery program. Uh, unfortunately, the California Public Utilities Commission says that we can't go in and actually install the toilet, but what we can do is we can basically bring it to your front door uh, and, and, there's, and that would be free of charge to you. Uh, then you would have to have a plumber install that for you. Or if you're much handier with a toolbox than I am, uh, you might be able to do that yourself. We're going to be starting a home water use uh, report program. One of the other questions that we get a lot is, I want to know how I'm doing, or the statements that we get, is I want to know how I'm doing in relation to the rest of my neighborhood or houses that are similar than mine. Am I using more water than them? Am I using less water than them? We're going to be launching that type of uh, water use report program. Uh, that's going to happen in probably the July-August time frame that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be sending out to each one of our customers hard copies of those reports and then those customers that we have email addresses for after three months will continue sending those reports out to those customers and if you were getting the paper copies but we don't have an email address on file you can give us your email address and then you'll continue getting those reports. We've got conservation kits. I mentioned this before that you can get those hose nozzles that automatically shut off. All you have to do is fill out a form on our website 
We'll ship out a conservation kit to you. It has one of those automatic shutoff nozzles. It has some high efficient uh, shower heads that you can install in your bathroom, faucet aerators for your bathroom and kitchen that decrease the amount of water that's flowing through those. And that's a really easy process. That's a really easy way uh, to save water and it literally is 30 seconds online to fill out those forms. For our commercial customers, if anybody in, in the audience owns a business or knows somebody who does, if they're a CalWater customer, again, we rebates for high efficient toilets, urinals, if, uh, if you're a business that has male and female restrooms, clothes washers, again, smart irrigation controllers, I mentioned those before, those are all the same types of rebates that we offer for our commercial customers. We have some different rebates for sprinkler nozzles. Large landscape users have, uh, have a different type of setup that they use for their irrigation. They use rotating nozzles more often than not. We have rebates for those. Uh, spray bodies which pre with pressure regulation and automatic shutoff that if the nozzle breaks, then it will automatically stop the spray of water. You won't see those uh, rockets of water going up into the air. And then also turf replacement programs for our commercial customers. And again, we've got information on all those programs that I just mentioned. Uh, well, most of those programs that I just mentioned, there are handouts there. All that information is also online. If you go to calwater.com, click on the conservation tab, and select Palos Verdes under the district, uh, you'll be able to pull up the info, all the programs that we're, are, you're eligible for. Uh, and then as we roll out those additional programs, We'll be advertising those to our customers, uh, both on web and, the social, and social media, et cetera. As I said a couple times, our approach to this is really to have a customer first approach. And uh, I, I kind of started talking about this before, but uh, as soon as the governor's executive order came out, Marty, who's our president and CEO and our board of directors said, uh, we don't want to hurt our customers by this. We want our customers to look, as, look at us as being a resource, look at us as be helping them achieve the reductions that are being imposed on them by, by the governor and the State Water Resource Control Board. We are going to have a customer first approach to the drought. And I've said it three times, and I said it only three times, and even though you know, Marty has said it probably 50 or so times uh, in his conversations with all of our employees. Uh, so in the course of two months, what we will have accomplished are a couple things. We will have completely reorganized our organization internally to make sure that sufficient resources are being applied to the drought, to make sure that we can help our customers achieve the reductions that are being mandated of them. The first bullet on this screen says that we're standing up a call center. We're gonna have a call center that is specific to the drought for each one of our customers that they can call if they have questions about their water budgets, rebate programs that we offer, the appeals process, et cetera. Standing that up in a matter of two months is, uh, it's a fairly big task. If anybody in here is open to business, we're functionally open to business in a matter of two months. Uh, we will have assigned water budgets to all 500,000 of our customers, individualized water budgets for each, every 500,000, all 500,000 of our customers across the state which is a big task in and of itself because we have to look at each customer's usage individually and assign that water budget. It's not just for one month. It's June through February of 2016 that we will have done that. We will have sent out one million notifications to all of our customers across the state. Uh, invitations similar to the one that, ones that you all got prior to coming to this meeting. Uh, and that's just prior to June 1st. We'll be ramping up our communications with our customers to make sure that they have knowledge about all the conservation programs that we offer, et cetera. We're also gonna be bringing on some additional regional conservation coordinators. Those are people that are gonna be out in our communities helping customers conserve water. Our goal and finding ways to conserve water. We're not hiring water cops. Yeah. We're, that's, that's not what we wanna do. I said before that we don't wanna be finding people that's not what we wanna do. We want to help our customers. And the conservation coordinators, what their job is going to be to do is to first and foremost reach out to our largest water users and help those large water users find ways to reduce their water use. And then they're going to be out in the community helping people find ways that they can reduce their water use. They're going to be assisting with all of our conservation programs. Uh, so those are just some of the things that, that we're doing. In, in our effort to comply with the, with the mandates that have been imposed upon us 
and to help you all achieve the, tar the reduction targets that are being called for by the governor and the board. We're also going to be rolling out a modified bill design that provides some additional information about your water use versus prior years. I had said before that we're going to be telling you what your next month's water budget is. That's going to be included on your water bill. And then, of course, I mentioned this already, all of our drought resources that we have available on calwater.com, from facts and tip sheets to videos on how to read your meter, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't have it already, this is our customer service number. This is the number that you can use in the meantime if you have a question about the drought. We don't have the call center set up yet, so I can't give you that telephone number. But if that'll be an 800 telephone number, but you can call us if you have questions. You can also email us. If there's anybody who has uh, difficulty seeing that, the phone number is 310-257-1400. 310-257-1400, and the email address is info, I-N-F-O-R-D, info, R-D, at calwater.com. And that'll go, those emails go directly to our customer service team. And if you've got questions or concerns, and we know that, uh, we know that the way that the, that, the, that the governor and the State Water Resource Control Board has rolled this out so quickly, frankly, it's scared uh, you know, a lot of our customers, and a lot of customers are confused. And that's part of the reason why we want to have forums like this, is that that's not what we want to do to our customers. We're all in this together, uh, and we want to help you all achieve those reductions that are being mandated uh, on all of us. If we want to go ahead and get that mic set up for questions, uh, prior to the meeting, a young lady presented us with a several questions that I've now misplaced. I think I remember them, though. <laughs> so the first question, the first question that she had, uh, and the most important question that she had was related to the turf replacement program. Uh, and I, I spoke about that a little bit before. I unfortunately I don't work in our conservation department. It's okay. I, I know the questions. Okay. Thank you. Though. So I don't have all the details about the, about the turf replacement program and how much the rebate is going to be. We'll have that in information available online. Uh, one thing that we're also looking at doing with that turf replacement program, and this is not a promise in any sense of the imagination, but it's somebody who's done a replacement of their turf in the last couple months. We're looking at uh, seeing whether or not we might be able to help them uh, with rebate as well, because we know a lot of customers have gone out of their way to comply with the drought uh, and to reduce their own water use. So we're looking at that. Her other question related to health and safety, which hopefully I addressed before. If there's a health and safety requirement that prevents someone from reducing their water use at all, uh, what will likely occur in that situation is we wouldn't require any reduction in water use for those customers. As an example of that, uh, we're not asking hospitals uh, to reduce their water use. It's kind of important that, you know, doctors have clean hands and things. So we don't, we don't really want to tell them, hey, stop washing your hands. We'll, we'll work with, our with the hospitals in our service areas to try to get them to cut back on their water use outside. But uh, that's an example of the health exemptions that we're going to have. Uh, the last question that she, this young lady asked what related to the quote unquote controversy regarding tiered water rates. And just a couple weeks ago, uh, the city of San Juan Capistrano lost in the appeals court of California a case that was bought, brought by a group of taxpayers that said that there, the tiered water rates in San Juan Capistrano were illegal because they were not directly related to uh, the cost of providing them with service. Uh, it's unclear right now whether or not the city of San Juan Capistrano were, is going to appeal that to the California Supreme Court. My guess is they probably will. What's important for you all to know in relation to this is that though the California Constitution through Proposition 218 establishes certain criteria for public agencies and the way that they apply rates, uh, the California Constitution separately authorizes the California Public Utilities Commission to establish the rates for the utilities it regulates, like Cal Water. Any decision on how that case relates to the tiered water rates that we have for our customers would ultimately be decided by the California Public Utilities Commission. Our perspective is the same as our counterparts in the industry, that tiered rates are an effective and important. I'm not moving. 
they're, that those tiered water rates are ineffective. That's probably a good call. It probably is the wind. I mean, stand like this maybe. Uh, that the tiered water rates are an effective uh, tool for encouraging water conservation. That as you use more water, that the price per unit of water should, should also increase. Um, so the immediate effect of that decision in San Juan Capistrano is limited. Uh, if there's any impact whatsoever, it may cause some reconsideration at the Public Utilities Commission, but given the seriousness of the drought, I don't believe that they're going to come out tomorrow or any time in the near future and say, every one of the utilities we regulate, get rid of your tiered water rates. I th hopefully I've answered this young lady's questions. Uh, if not, please find me afterwards and I'll be happy to talk about any of these things anymore. So we've got one microphone up here so that everybody in the room can answer questions. What I'd like to do is if you have a question, maybe what we can do is just form a line in front of this microphone. It looks like we might have a couple people that are leaving. 